Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process in discussions between the authors, narrators, producers, and post production teams that bring them all together, as well as guests who have listened to the audiobooks and have questions for the creative teams. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, everyone. Today I have with me Adam Fritz. Adam is the CEO of Positron, the audiobook proofing service. Adam, welcome. Thank you, Becky. Great to be chatting with you today. Well, let's jump right in. Tell us a little bit about you and your background in this audiobook world. Yeah, so I've been with Positron since January 2021. That was a couple of years into the Positron's journey as a company. I was hired by our founder, Jake Posnansky, to bring some business leadership to the team and, and help us grow our business specifically on the B2B side, more with publishers. But we've grown a huge amount since then. Our company has been around since 2017 when development started and we launched commercially in 2018. I don't know if you know this, Becky, but you are actually our very first customer account. Uh, you're, you're customer account number five, now, but the first four were internal accounts. So I looked at that the other day. You're actually customer ID number five in our in our account, in our system. I love that. <laughs> so thank you so much for all the testing you did early on for us. Really... I joined the company as an audiobook listener with no idea how audiobooks were produced. One of the first things I did in my onboarding with the company now that every that we do with every single one of our employees is I actually recorded a chapter of an audiobook and went through the whole process and immediately realized, A, no one's going to pay me to narrate anything, and B, how difficult it is to, to produce scripted audio. So it's really given me an appreciation of of how difficult a job it is to produce really good quality audio. And then it also gives an appreciation for how much our tool can help in the process. We're the only prerequisite we have for anyone we hire is that you have to love audiobooks as a listener or in some roles as a someone involved in the production process. But that's a bit of a long rambling answer to say, I've been with the company since 2021 and we're going fast. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I, I actually still remember that phone call from Jake when we first started talking. He was telling me about what they were thinking. And I was like, well, this sound or working on. I was like, this really sounds great. It was yeah, really enjoyable to be part of the early process. And now I know that you so you weren't with the company from the outset, yeah. but I'm sure that you've learned a lot about the that startup process. And yes. and so what would you say is the problem that the founders saw and then the solution that they wanted to provide for that? Yeah, so going back a little bit, technically, most startups ha see a problem and then design a tool to solve it. Ours came about a little bit differently where Jake and a couple other developers were playing around with ASR, automated speech recognition technology, because it was a bit of, it was a, you know, on vogue, I guess, at the time. And then he kind of, my understanding is he, he almost fell accidentally across the audiobook proofing problem. So really, I think at its core, the one thing I've learned is that audiobooks are very difficult to make. And it's, it can be a very manual, time-consuming process. When I tell someone at a birthday party or something like that what I do, and then they say, well, why does your software help? They don't understand it can take dozens of hours to produce one hour of content. And I think at its core, what Jake and the team realized is that there are a lot of opportunities for technology to tighten up the production workflow. So from a, you know, our main tool is a proofing tool. It can take one and a half, two, or even three hours to proof a single hour of audio manually with your DAW open and your script open in Excel to type in all those mistakes. You can get that much, much closer to that one-to-one -one ratio. And I think that's at its core. I know the the value of the technology and why Jake got the company into this into this business. I know Jake from a is a lover of audiobooks. He and his wife listen to a ton of audiobooks at home. And I think that's where it originally came up is he was a huge lover of audiobooks and then got a little bit more into understanding the production side. And then there was some serendipity, I guess, in terms of <laughs> having a technology he was starting to build and then came across the audiobook business case, I guess. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, and, and I should start with the assumption that most of our listeners are not going to understand what Positron is and what it does. So let's sort of lay that foundation now a little more fully, you know, to give. So m- many of our listeners are authors mm-hmm. who are learning about the audiobook production process. Okay. We also have many listeners who are in the industry, narrators and and editors and such. But this is really helpful, I think, to give us this because what you're doing and and with Positron is so helpful as a piece of the process. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about what that piece looks like? Of course, we've got a number of different tools designed at for scripted audio production. I'm going to talk our main one and, and where we generate most of our revenue and where most users are familiar with us is a proofing tool. So you upload your script, you upload your audio file, and Positron matches the two together and gives an output of every potential mistake, what we call an annotation that your narrators made. Those, na- those mistakes are five different types. So there's a mispronunciation, an added word, so a word the narrator added into the script, whether it's a filler word or otherwise, a missed word that they omitted from their reading of the script, pauses longer than two seconds, and noises, everything from distortions in your audio like a hard clip or you know a siren driving by on the street outside. All of these things are flagged. And then you have a human proofer go through, listen to all of those mistakes, and decide whether it is okay or or, or requires a pickup or, or you know a re-record in the audio file. We then have integrations with digital audio workstations or DAWs where your editor can do their editing much faster. We've also built a number of tools for pre-production. So when I joined the company, the proofing tool was almost everything we offered. We had a very early stage pronunciation guide, but we've added a bunch of tools. So when a narrator or author or anyone else is beginning their audiobook project, they can scan a script really quickly and get an output of every word our algorithm believes your average narrator may not know how to pronounce click a couple buttons and then get that correct pronunciation back from the Oxford Dictionary or Forvo and Merriam-Webster is coming very soon as well. So the idea is our tool will remove as much of that manual and menial process as possible. So you're doing the same work, you're doing the same, even probably even a better quality job in a fraction of it. So right. we look at every time we can save as much as 30 seconds for in an audio production over the course of a seven hour book, it's going to add up to to hours and hours of, of person and time saved. Yeah. And just to touch on some of those things that you covered, so the proofing tool yeah. is, as you mentioned, the human reviewer then does go through not only checking, well, at least the way we use it. Yeah. You know, we also have a human Refer- editor who is going to listen to the entire yep. thing as well. Of course. And now does Positron catch everything? It will catch of mispronunciations. I can categorically say it'll pretty much never miss an added word or a missed word. The one thing it's not designed to catch, and and I'll get explained from a technical perspective why, is things like character voices and, and performance elements. Why we would still recommend you have a human listen to the entire audio. The goal of our tool is to make it so your human proofer editor is not having to pay attention to the technical stuff or all the words said correctly, and more making sure a character voice is consistent and authentic to where that person is from. More of the acting side of things, because, you know, audiobooks are an art form. They're not just reading from a script. There is an element of performance there for in the best quality ones, at least, that separates it from other forms of storytelling. And And I will also say, which is the reason I believe that, you know, AI narration will take an element of, and that's not what our company is doing, but there are companies out there doing it. It will take a, a portion of the market, but I believe why it's not going to be a total game changer is that AI is not going to be the best storytelling. So Yeah, we're going to jump into that exactly. rabbit hole a little but bit later. The reason that our tool is not currently yet designed to catch things like performance, you know, character voices and that kind of thing is AI generally is very good at black or white things. Is this pronounced correctly or not? Is this word in the audio recording or not? Things like character voice and accents and those kind of things is very much more of a shades of gray type of situation that I believe you need that humanity to decide whether it needs to be fixed or not. AI is just, at least at this point, not there yet. Yeah. And some of the other things that I, just for our listeners to understand, you know, sometimes there will be a word that it, you know, Positron may pick up as a as a potential error. 
And again, this is what you said, you have to have a, a human go through and actually check because sometimes those those words are, are said correctly, you know, it may just not be, it may be the way that it's said that is triggering that that yeah. pickup. And then, of course, sometimes character names, for example, yep. you know, and when, when an author has a name that maybe instead of Stephen, it's supposed to be Stefan exactly. or something like that. Yep. One of the other things I really love about the tool that you mentioned is that the pronunciations, certainly for our clients, where we're asking them to go through and provide the pronunciations for things like that unusual names, made up names yeah. or words, all those kinds of things. It provides a great way for our authors to be able to provide those pronunciations in a way that the narrators can then easily find and and recognize and and hear the pronunciations that are provided. Exactly. So. From a collaboration process, regardless of your role, if you're an author, a narrator, an editor, anything, you have a different workflow inside of Positron and also a way to share all that work with everyone else involved in the project. Because with very rare exception, you know, audiobooks are not just one person doing everything end to end. There's at least one other person involved in the process usually. So right. our tool makes it easier to collaborate. Right. Yes. We also found it's, it makes a significant difference, makes it so much easier for our author clients to be able to review the audio yep. and for them to say, oh, and here's a thing. That, you know, it could even be something like, oh, when I hear this, I realize that it was a typo, yep. that kind of thing that, you know, the AI is going to mark it as accurate if it was accurately read. Exactly. Um, and there's also times where there is a mistake, but that mistake doesn't actually really require a re-record because it's a very minor change or or maybe it's even a better take on something or fixes a typo and that kind of thing. So that's why you still need that human to go through and listen and listen to listen to the audio. Yeah. yeah. So since you've come on board, what are some of the the ways in which things have evolved at Positron since you arrived? Well, I mean, our team has grown. I think we were, I was maybe employee number six or seven, and now we're at 11 and soon to be 12. So we're growing. Our business has grown as well. But I think from the feature perspective, Really, when I joined the company, we did a, we, one of the first things I did with the team was map out with Ryan or director of outreach map out what an audiobook production looks like in terms of all the steps involved and then look at where each of our features fit in there and there was a lot of i think the stickies for what we didn't handle were green and there was a lot of green stickies up there so we had a really good post-production tool with our proofing and a little bit on the pre-production side and so now we've got features designed for enunciation and character work script markups the a much more robust proofing tool that also has a whole bunch of different languages we support. And now we've added a couple of tools in the mastering side of things. You know, one thing you can upload your mastered audio and test it against your distributor specifications. So we're really trying to become what previously was just a proofing tool to be a suite of full production tools for scripted audio production. That's really the goal is to have something directed at every single step of the process. And I mean, to put it from a business perspective, we there was one of the big five who historically had no not a lot of interest in, in hearing from us. And when we built those script prep tools we, out of the blue last year, we heard from one of them and now they prep every single one of their books through our script prep tools. So just shows the growth we've had over the two and a bit years with the team on you know, setting a goal and, and getting there where one of the biggest publishing companies in the world relies on us for all of their audiobook productions. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's been certainly a delight for us here at Pro Audio Voices to be with you on this journey because of all the great tools that you've been providing. Very exciting. What's in the works now in terms of features and such? There's a lot. So we're making a lot of updates to our existing features on the script prep side. The thing I'm most excited for is our character voice guide, which is a way where you can currently go in and write a bunch of notes about a character that you pull out of the book, and then also record a sample of that character voice. And there's a bunch of things there. It's a great recording tool, so you could put down information. Currently, it does not pull a lot of information out of the text. So what we're building is a couple different tools that will allow a narrator or author, whoever's prepping a book, to pull cues for how that character should be performed out of the book. So one of them is basically it'll pull adjectives and adverbs linked to that character's name out of the book and give you almost a 
the word cloud or heat map around how that character is described in the book so the narrator can pull cues on what the voice should sound like. One example is a narrator talked to me recently, and this wasn't, I guess this was last year sometime, and he was working on a duet narration where he was recording, you know, for argument's sake, the odd chapters and other narrators recording the even ones. And he recorded it, sent in the recording, and the first piece of feedback he got was, didn't you read the book from the author? And he said, why? And because he'd missed, he'd only read his chapters of the book. And in one of his, one of the other narrator's chapters, there was a note say, there was a, a line, some other character saying, oh, I forgot how deep the main character's voice was. And so there was this cue that he should have been recording this deep baritone and he just completely didn't even read it. So the goal of our tool is to be able to pull that kind of information out easily to make sure those kind of mistakes never happen. We're building a teleprompter, which the goal of you're basically doing all your script prep, and then you're going to be able to integrate that into a teleprompter where a character's name comes up. You can click a little play button and listen to that voice that you've recorded, or a word that's on your pronunciation guide will be automatically highlighted. You can click play and listen to that pronunciation while you're recording, which would be really powerful. And then the biggest thing is we're working on a what we're calling a project management tool that'll really enable teams of people to collaborate much more efficiently. So as simple as being able to assign individual people to different roles in a multi-narrator situation, for example. And then you can actually tag if Becky, if you're one of the narrators, you could say, you know, at Becky in, in the pickup packet and make it a little more personal. And then also build a ton of scheduling tools and, and estimation tools in terms of the amount of time you should be committing to different steps in the process. So there's a lot going on, but those are three of the things we're really excited about. Oh, that sounds awesome. Great. Let's just take a short pause and then we're going to dive down that rabbit hole that you started circling the edge of earlier on about AI as narrator. Sounds great. Frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook? Annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70%, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out, or at least shrink, the middleman. Yet, you want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience, and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. Pro Audio Voices hears you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% royalties of the price you set that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com in the marketing menu. Okay, so one of the recent things that we're seeing in the audiobook world is the arrival of AI in a whole different kind of way that mm -hmm. feels very threatening to many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people are worried about it. Some people aren't. So I thought it would be fun to chat about that because here you are working with an AI tool that is a resource to support human narrators in the process. Yes. And also, I know that you have specific statements about your commitment regarding voices and such in yeah. AI. So yeah. I want to give you a moment to share about that. And then, yeah. We'll of course. So I'll touch on it from the Positron perspective first. As a company, we believe audiobooks are an art form and that art is produced by humans. So in terms of our terms of service and what we commit to people. So we do not sell or transfer your data to anyone else, full stop. All of our tools are built internally. So it's not like your recordings or scripts or anything gets transferred externally other than the company that basically handles all of our payments and that kind of thing. So in terms of your voice recordings and your data, it stays within Positron's ecosystem. Our terms of service are very clear on what we can and cannot do with that data. We can basically do three things with it. We process it to actually provide you the service. So we have to process it to match the script and the audio and that kind of thing to troubleshoot. So if you have a, an issue with a project and you email us, we'll need to access that data to be able to help you figure out what's going on. Then the third thing is we use that to, to continue improving our services. So what that basically means is let's take our proofing algorithm, which is the one that matches the script to the text and gives you the output of all the mistakes. We snip up the audio and the text into matched anonymized small segments and 
huge amounts of these fully anonymized. And then we run it through a machine learning algorithm. And what that does, it just makes our algorithms much more efficient and, or sorry, much more effective and accurate. You, we don't sell the data to anyone. We don't give it away. It also very specifically says we do not have the right to use that data to train a replica of your voice. So that is something we're not doing and will not do. And then the other thing we cannot use it to map the performative elements of how a human voice performs narration. So we're not doing that. Our goal as a company is not to replace the human in the process. It is to make that human more efficient. I saw a meme a little while ago on social media, and it was something to the effect of you will not be replaced by AI. You will be replaced by a human that uses AI to do their job efficiently. And so really we're trying to be a tool for audiobook production professionals to become more efficient. Our tool, I believe AI is never going to be as good at telling a story than a human narrator. Yeah. But you can, your production workflow can be more efficient and faster right. and, you know, less wasted time by using tools like Positron and there's others as well to do your job smarter. It's a, it's a work smarter, not harder situation. I think that, that we're trying to create. Yeah. I think it's great. I, I so appreciate that. And what do you think about these? I was read a, a blog post, I think it was, about a speech key and book baby and what they were. Now there are going to be more audiobooks and, <laughs> more, you know, it's going to be more accessible to more people. And I mean, my take on it was, OK, just having more audiobooks is not really the point here. I mean, it, making it so that everybody can afford a thing doesn't make it a better thing. So it's like we're not... What are we talking about here in terms of the goal? My take on it was the goal is they want a bigger piece of the the financial pie. Mm -hmm. And so this is their way of getting that. It's not about making great end products. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I would I would love to hear sort of your take on what's going on in that, you know, with their thinking or their approach or I mean, and it doesn't have to be specific to that company, but I'll, I'll answer this in two at first as a, as a listener and then as a businessman. So as a listener, I don't, I mean, I just, I've said this before. I said this at APAC last year in a, in a session I was on. I don't, I don't enjoy listening to AI narrated audio, you know, to watching the Mandalorian last year when spoiler alert, Luke Skywalker shows up at the end, really, really cool. And I loved it, but it was very clear it wasn't him. Right. And you can uh -huh. tell. So as a listener, I don't love it. I can see certain applications where if something is not produced in audio form, would you rather have no audio form or or the AI narration? I can understand some of that, especially when it comes to accessibility. You know, we do a lot of work with the Royal R the RNIB, the Royal National Institute of the Blind, or the Canadian National Institute of the Blind, Learning Ally in the United States, where there are certain there are certain arguments to be made that more content available in accessible mediums is a good thing. Having said that on the business side of things, I can understand where these companies are coming from with that argument where they say, you know, more content, we're just making more content. Sure, that is an element of it, but there's also going to be an element of current human voiced audiobooks that will be done with AI as well. Like it's a bit disingenuous to argue that, but I as a business, you know, as a businessman, I can yeah. understand that's their marketing plan there. I will say one thing is that our, there are currently many levels of audiobook production in terms of cost and quality out there that would be equal to or better than AI. So if you if you look at on ACX, which I don't want to get too political, <laughs> but the, the royalty share model can be pretty predatory on a lot of narrators and you're generally getting a very this is a generalization, a narrator who isn't super experienced, likely generally a lower end quality, lower quality end results just based on that experience. But you're right. also paying at sometimes literally zero dollars if no one buys anything. So right. I think it's the bottom of the pyramid that will get displaced by AI where, you know, I, th I think that's the, the reality of the situation. There's going to be there's probably certain types of content that lend themselves more to AI narration books, for example, where it's not, doesn't have to be a big performance, but I, the reality is even though AI is going to take over some section of audiobooks, the size of their market share that they take over is going to be decided by one group of people and that's listeners. So right. if listeners buy the audiobooks that AI, is produ AI produces, 
it'll be a bigger share. If listeners mm-hmm. listen to it and don't like it, it'll be a smaller sh- share. So right. the one thing I would say, I'll echo exactly what I said at APAC last year and with everything going on with the you know, Apple Books that's been in the press lately, right. if you're involved in audiobook production or if you're involved in anything in your life and you have a contract in front of you, read every line of that contract and ask <laughs> questions. Yeah. Don't just like, we all do it. You know, when I get a new cell phone, I... Do I read that terms of service? Absolutely not. (laughs) But if something is wrong in that contract and then I end up suffering the consequences, it's on me. I didn't read the contract. So that would be my best advice is join PANA, join SAG-AFTRA, whoever it is who can help you understand those contracts and read them before you sign them. That would just be my only unsolicited advice for people in the industry is if you don't read a contract, it's... Yeah, yeah. it's on you. Yeah. 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 That's great. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what listeners, what they do. And I think you're right. That's going to be what determines the the future of that. Absolutely. That Absolutely. Yeah. I won't be buying any AI books. I'll tell you that. But <laughs> time, yeah, I guess time will tell. Yeah. There was, I was thinking earlier today, actually, you know how there are many programs, email, for example, where as you start to type an email, it'll put in words to suggest where you're going. You yeah, know? the predictive text. Yeah, it's a little scary yes. sometimes, isn't it? It is. It is. And what I, what it made me realize that I hadn't really thought about before is how that sort of gradually tries to to conform us into a certain. You know, it's like taking away these slight personal nuances, mm-hmm. and when I. When I recognized that, it became even more scary. So, <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I was talking to a friend the other night. I, I'm catching up with him and he's a lawyer. And he said that he had used chat GPT to write the first draft of a letter, a personal letter, not something for work. Yeah. And he said, you know, it got me 80% of the way there and I had to edit it for my individual tone. But the reality is you could take that AI, have it read your entire email inbox and it would start writing in your it would start writing in your voice and be a little more authentic to you. So it's it's a little scary that way. Sure, there are lots of applications that make it save us time, but yeah, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I would say there's definitely right. some some downsides to it. Yeah, I think it's 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 good just to even like be conversing about it because I feel like that keeps us aware of at least what we're doing. You know, because we're all you know we're all out there doing our lives and doing so many things mm-hmm. and then something comes along and it seems like it's making it easier. And so we do that and we yep. usually don't even think about it except that, oh, that makes it go faster. Yeah. So I think it's really good to be uh, to be in the conversation about Agreed. it. Agreed. So tell our listeners how they can learn more about Positron. Like what's your website? Uh, www.positron.com, P-O-Z-O-T-R-O-N.com, or if you're Canadian like me, P-O-Z-O-T-R-O-N.com. So you can check us out there. We're on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram as well. Best just to go to our website. You can see a bunch of YouTube tutorials. There's a link to book a demo with us. So if you're interested in learning about Positron, no commitment, we'll get on a 30 minute video call or 15 minutes if that's all you have show you how the tool works and explains how it'll help your audiobook production workflow. I should say scripted audio production, we're not just for audiobooks. Really, if you record anything off of a script, our tools will work for you. Great. Again, this is Adam Fritz, CEO of Positron. Adam, thank you so much for your time today. No problem. Thanks for having me on, Becky. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week.